Brontosaurus. In the late 19th century, two American paleontologists, Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, competed against each other to discover and name the most dinosaurs. This period was later called the Bone Wars or the Great Dinosaur Rush. Both Marsh and Cope used many tactics like spying, stole each other's shipments or even the destruction of bones. They were not even afraid to blow up each other's dig sites and rushed with publishing of their results. Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus were discovered in the Morrison Formation, but in two different locations during this time of intense rivalry. It was Othniel Charles Marsh who found and named Apatosaurus Ajax in 1877 and Brontosaurus Excelsus in 1879. A Brontosaurus skeleton was found in Wyoming. The fossil was more complete and larger than that of Apatosaurus. Marsh named it Brontosaurus Excelsus, meaning Noble Thunder Lizard in Greek. It was a large sauropod, with its typical for this group long neck and long tail. Scientists believed that this dinosaur lived during the late Jurassic period, from about 156 to 145 million years ago. It wasn't until 1903, after Marsh's death, when Elmer Riggs argued in a publication that there were not enough dissimilarities between the two dinosaurs. He thought that the two species were actually of the same genus. Because Apatosaurus's name was published first, due to the rules of scientific naming, it was deemed to be the only one valid name. This is why the specimen became Apatosaurus excelsus, and Brontosaurus's name was no longer technically used, even though for over 100 years the name Brontosaurus wasn't officially used by paleontologists, but it definitely lived on in the minds of the public. The image of this dinosaur appeared in films, on logos, and on postal stamps. In the 2015 publication of a specimen-level phylogenic analysis and taxonomic revision of Diplodocidae, Dinosauria sauropoda, states that although there are many similarities between Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus, they are not the same. A group of scientists led by Emmanuel Schopp, a vertebrate paleontologist at the new University of Lisbon in Portugal, and his colleagues Octavio Mateus at the new university, and Robert B. J. Benson at the University of Oxford in England, used 81 specimens from many collections around the world and assessed as many as 477 anatomical traits. They found the evidence that both specimens were distinct, and one of the main differences being that Apatosaurus was more massive and robust, with a thicker and lower set neck than Brontosaurus. Other differences were found in the back and shoulder bones. This was enough for the researchers to reinstate the status of this iconic dinosaur. Some experts are still more hesitant to accept these findings, and say that there are always some distinct differences between the same species. According to Dr. Sharp, the Apatosaurus displayed at the American Museum of Natural History and the adult skeleton at the Carnegie Museum are probably still an Apatosaurus. However, other researchers are confident that the specimen displayed at the Yale Peabody Museum is actually a Brontosaurus. Although Brontosaurus was smaller than Apatosaurus, it is still estimated that an adult individual could grow to lengths of 69 to 75 feet or 21 to 23 meters. When standing, the height would be between 26.6 and 28.9 feet, which is 8.1 to 8.8 .8 meters. It was about 6 foot 6 to 7 foot 4 feet or 2 to 2.5 meters wide. The estimated weight is between 15 to 22 tons. It is believed that Brontosaurus could live up to 80 to 100 years, 
The claw of Brontosaurus was found in Wyoming, the USA. It appears that some sauropods had large claws on their hands. It was suggested by some that they were used for self-defense. However, another more likely reason was that the dinosaur used their claws to help grasp trees when trying to reach high up foliage. It could also be used to make nests in the ground or search for water. So what was the reason for such extremely long necks? Scientists compared the dinosaurs to living animals and have come up with a few ideas. The first reason is that it could be that, like giraffes, sauropods including Brontosaurus used its long neck to get to leaves on top of trees out of reach of other herbivores looking for food. Their necks were flexible and perhaps they could use it to effectively sweep a large area of lower vegetation. Another proposal is that a longer neck would help attract mates. There are a few traits seen in the necks of Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus that specifically suggest these giants were fit for combat and to ward off competitors. The thickness of the neck is higher than in many other sauropods. Also, the more triangular shape may have protected important soft tissue such as the trachea or the windpipe and major blood vessels from the damage from impacts caused by potentially smashing the neck downwards or sideways onto something like another dinosaur's neck or body, similarly to the upright battles of male elephant seals. Their long tail could also be used like bullwhips, creating sonic sounds that would have scared away predators. Initially, scientists thought that large sauropod dinosaurs would have spent most of their time in water to help hold their massive bodies. However, scientists including Elmer Riggs argued that such sauropods lived on land. Many decades later, his proposal was finally recognized after more research confirmed the theory. They assessed the structure of the limbs, backbone, hands and feet as a great adaption for supporting these giants while walking on land. Although some evidence was found in the soft sediments of prehistoric dinosaur tracks, therefore, it is thought that these prehistoric giant dinosaurs probably spent most of their time on land, but also waded into the shallow waters of rivers and lagoons. To back up their theory, scientists give example of living elephant behavior. These animals are also large in size and live on land but they also spend time near water to bathe and drink. They are able to cross large rivers to reach new feeding grounds. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like and consider joining our Patreon Links in the description.